Good morning, dear followers of TSM. I would like uh, this morning, my name, by the way, is François Blouin, director of the Sword Ministries Society. And this morning, I would like to welcome you to our session number 25. It's been a while. Um, thank you for your patience about these things. And you know that we are still working on theology proper, the first division of it, which is theism. Basically, we did the existence of God in the past, the personalities of God, the names of God, and now the last division is the attributes of God, the last division of theism within theology proper. We've been looking at the attributes of God, but we have not started yet in a sense. So, capital A, we looked already, it's tick mark, definitions of God, definition of God, the long and the short. We've looked at capital B, the definition of attributes. And now this morning, we look at uh, the classification of the attributes. It's a bit tedious. It's not long. But since uh, this systematic is an in-depth look, I need to go through a few things in a short manner to explain to you basically how theologians this morning uh, within the, the session 25, how they divide uh, the attributes of God, how they divide these things, and so on. So, let's start with our silent time for a few seconds. Thank you for following us online. I know it's been a while, Now I'm going to try to do a few sessions in a row. They will be posted on the YouTube channel through the website of this ministry. Let us pray. Father, we come to you on the basis of faith. We haven't seen you, yet we have faith that we are found, that we do sustain a relationship with you. And it's mainly caused by your divine attributes, specifically the one of grace. We thank you, Father, for being what you are. Not that you have these things like we, like we have seen, but you are these things. You are love and you are grace, and in the meantime, you are justice as well. We thank you, Father, that we don't come in judgment at the great white throne, that the only one that we will be partaking in is the judgment seat of Christ, unto rewards for what's awaiting us, the famous expected messianic kingdom. Thank you for your patience, open the eyes of our souls, that we may behold wonderful things from your law. And we pray this fire, uh, Father, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. In Jesus' name, Amen. Classification of the attributes of God, capital C. Why divided so? Why are they divided? Or what is the basis of the classification? It's basically that some are found only in God. They are true uh, of God alone. That's what we would call basically the perfect way. And secondly, some are to be in a limited way in man. So that's the limited way. So some are found only in God, in God alone. They are true of God alone. And some are to be found in man in a limited way only. So first of all, it's the perfect way. And secondly, the limited way. Secondly, what I would like to uh, tell you, based upon what's written on the board here right now, I would like to give you how some theologians, well-known theologians, how they divide them. Not that we, that I have a personal preference, maybe I do, but it's not necessary to expound on these things right now. The purpose of this session is just to show you how some theologians divide the uh, attributes of God, on which we will do in session 26, 27, and 28, and maybe more. So, uh, the theologian Louis Burkhoff divides them in the following way. He calls them, he calls them incommunicable attributes of God, and also communicable attributes of God. When he says incommunicable, they have met no extension or degree or decree or uh, degrees, and there is nothing analogous to them in creation. What does he mean by communicable? They are found basically in a limited degree in creation 
and they would be analogous in creation also. So that's how Birkhoff divides them. Simply keep in mind incommunicable as over against communicable and so on. B, Thiessens and Baker, these are theologians here, they divide the attributes of God this way, non-moral and moral. By non-moral attributes is that which is con constitutional in God. That is which is constitutional in God and by moral, they function by virtue of the divine will. A bit difficult to understand, but that's how Thiessen and Baker divides the attributes of God in a non-moral way, or natural if you want to, and the moral way which they function by virtue of the divine will. Let's take Strong's division of the attributes. They have two ways, this way and this way, C and D. Let's start with the first one. They classify them, Strong's classify them as intransitive attributes or characteristics of God and also transitive attributes or characteristics of God. By intransitive, what does he mean by that, François? They are within God's being. The attributes would be within God's being. This is intransitive. Intransitive, they reach out from God and produce certain effects. They reach out from God and produce certain effects in his creation, of course. This is one of the Strong's uh, view on the attributes. There is a second one, lowercase d here. Um, it goes that way for this one. Some are absolute, meaning they concern God's relationship to himself, absolute, and relative attributes, God's relationship to others. That's the second way in which Strong divides them. Then we move on to Schaefer or Chafer here. He goes with personality attributes and constitutional. What does he mean by personality? It's the fact that they are related to the intellect, emotion, and will, which basically constitute the personality. And constitutional, they are related to the being of God. A bit like confusion, a little bit difficult to understand, but I, want, I wanted to walk you through these things. Two more without a name. Some theologians, they say negative or positive. By negative attributes, they are free from finite limitation. And by positive attributes, in a, in a limited degree, it belongs to the creature. It is something that is a firm, negative and positive. And lastly, will be a shorter devotional today, some theologians divide them as passive and active. What do they mean by passive? They extend to God only, the passive one, and active, they extend to creation only. Once again, I don't have a personal preference. It's just to show you that uh, there are varieties of dividing, of divisions or divisions within the teaching of the attributes of God. And next week, or devotional 26, 27, and 28, more scriptures will be provided as we will take the attributes of God, explain them, and perhaps one or two passages or verses of the scriptures related to the attributes to come. Once again, thank you for your patience with the ministry. You know what it does involve, uh, traveling in different capacities, teaching in different capacities. Very humbly, we would like to encourage you to uh, bless us in different ways. If you have been blessed by this, you can donate online and so on. And also we would covet your prayers for the future, for the ability to be able to carry on with such a ministry. Why don't we pray? Gracious Father, thank you for these varieties of theologians that have divided and studied very deeply the attributes of God. Help us, Divine Lord, to keep it simple and to focus on them and to find a way in which we relate to your attributes. And we do. We thank you for your Son, Christ Jesus, Hamashiach, having sent him, Father, to die 
to get buried and to rose again so that we may live. Give, give us strength, Father, to share the good news. That is the good news, that Christ died, secondly, that he was buried, and thirdly, that he rose again. Once we place our faith in this and nothing else, we find salvation, Father. And we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching, dear, belo dear beloved. We bid you shalom. I'm going to try not to have a big gap between number 25 and 26. See you shortly. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Shalom.